Hey kids, may I be the first to say a good afternoon to you and yours. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. That's the radio station. My name is Matt Murphy, and I'm your host until about 3 o'clock this afternoon. We'll hand off to Brian Wilson and The Drive on Super Talk. It's a part of Information Fueled and Opinion Driven News Talk Radio for the Masses on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Right now we're covering the breaking news, or we will start by covering the breaking news out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, there is a news conference expected. Bell, I need you to switch over to our news conference central. Uh, there is a news conference scheduled at some point on this major bridge collapse um, in Baltimore. It was the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Uh, it was hit by a huge, um, a, a huge ship uh, that was carrying uh, containers, container ship. And um, and the bridge collapsed. I'm I'm certain most of you, may, many of you, some of you. I don't want to assume things. Uh, I don't know where you are in your daily life, but uh, some of you have seen uh, the incredible video of the ship seemingly losing power, uh, regaining for about 15 seconds, regaining power. This is overnight in the overnight hours, uh, regaining power. Thank God that this did not happen on a more heavily traveled time of day. I think I've got the news conference. Well, that was early. this is from earlier this morning. So I got Governor Wes Moore of Maryland talking about it earlier this morning. Um, and an aspect of this that we'll focus on first, because I don't know what's going on. I don't know what caused it. None of us know what caused it. And rampant speculation is going on on social media platforms about, oh, I know that. There's a black swan event. Well, you, don't, you don't know your butt front. Come on. What's, but, a, what's black swan event? You don't know what a black swan I didn't either. I had to look it up. Like a black a black swan is a, a rarity that gets a lot of attention, uh, that focuses attention away from other things. September oh. 11th was a black swan event. Gotcha. COVID 19 was a black swan event. You know, all of these things are black swan. That's what we're calling them now. They're all they're all head fakes. They're all uh, black swan events. And if you don't know, then you're a, you're a sheep. You're naive. You don't get it, man. Uh, you don't get it. You don't understand the seriousness. You're a plebe, man. <laughs> uh, you know what? Not all conspiracy theories are wrong, but most are. Not all conspiracy theories are actually conspiracy theories. For example, our frustration with the level of government control that came about due to COVID-19 and the lies that our own government told us about the origins of COVID-19, the fact of the matter was that it was being worked on gain-of-function research in Wuhan, China, at the Wuhan Institute. And sadly, it escaped the Institute. Now, I don't know that we'll ever know whether it was intentional or unintentional, but that's what happened. And anyone that still clings to the bat meat theory, you're dumb. You're stupid. I'm sorry. To tell you that, I don't mean to be blunt about it, but I would say you're ignorant, but there is a plethora of information available to you to help you make this determination. Now, that's not a conspiracy theory to say that. It is a fact that the government tried to cover that up. It's a fact that Anthony Fauci tried to cover that up. So that's not what I'm talking about. But there are plenty of conspiracy theories online uh, that this falls right into. I mean, this falls right into that sort of category where people are already doing that. And you don't want to you don't want to let the inmates run the asylum or let the knuckleheads run the narrative. Uh, one have, has been hospitalized and six individuals are unaccounted for after this major bridge collapse. Um, in Baltimore. So what we believe is that this huge ship carrying shipping containers, uh, I, I don't know if it was loaded or unloaded. I imagine I could find that information out. Um, it was heading toward the Francis Scott Key Bridge in the early morning hours of this morning. Uh, it lost power. The reason we, well, we know a couple of things. One, we know that it lost power in as much as the captain of the ship declared a mayday more on that in a moment. You can see video. There's static video of the bridge. I mean, there's surveillance all over that bay. And there's static video of the bridge where you see the ship kind of going toward the opening and then it loses power. All the lights go off on the ship. So that's obviously a massive power failure. And the ship starts drifting a little bit and then moments before the collision with the pier on the bridge the lights go off again the lights come back on again it looks like it lists to the right now what our conspiracy theorist friends are speculating is that I, i've already looked all of this up it's embarrassing but 
They're suggesting that there was a, a strong lurch toward the pier, which indicates some level of terrorism or intentionality. And I don't know that that's the case or not, and no, n nor do you. But well, there's a submarine in the lake, and right, they right. pulled it towards the bridge to make sure it hit. A little towboat, a little, yeah. little towboat submarine. Little, they latched onto it, right, latched onto that propeller and yanked it right and, over. And that was Al-Qaeda that was in the submarine. Sometimes an accident is just an accident. I am not suggesting that I have the information to know whether or not this is just an accident. Like 9935, this is what you're getting. This, this is a good day to stay off social media based on how social media reacts to this because I love it. It, it is unfiltered. And you have to use the sense that God gave you. You have to understand your life experience, understand what you know to be true at the time that you're reading some of this garbage on social media and do your own homework to figure out what's real and what's not real. That's up to you. That's not up to the government. It's not up to the platforms necessarily. It's up to you to determine what you believe and what you don't believe. And so I'm not knocking 9935, but 9935 says, oh, this bridge attack, he calls it an attack. Looks like a trial run for the next round of attacks on multiple bridges. Or, or, or maybe it's just an accident. Eric writes in and says, cyber attack knocked out the power to the ship. Or, or, or maybe the, the power got knocked out another way. If, now, if this was an accident, we would have seen ship uh, ship issues thousands of years in the past. I mean, this is the first ship that's ever crashed that's right. into anything. Yeah, so right. we know. I think you're making a good point. Uh, yeah. I think you're making a good point. Ships don't ships don't wreck. Never happens. Never seen this happen in history. Ships. Do, this doesn't happen to ships. Ships don't wreck. Titanic ship, was a psyop. Ships don't crash into things. Come on, man. Look it, I'm open for information. Oh, Dakota's gotten in on it. You know what? Let's go ahead and get in your best conspiracy theories on this and put it to bed, right? 615-737-9986. Dakota says, has anyone said alien tractor beam yet? I call alien tractor beam. Dakota's got alien tractor beam, everybody. I know what happened. P. Diddy was piloting in the ship. Holy moly. Did he fly out of the country? Yes. To a to a the to as a I country with no a, extradition with no to extra the United States Cor of America. Correct, yeah. How in the hell? Don't get me started, Bell. Get ready, Bell. You're in for a problem. Uh, you're gonna in for. I got to get the quote right. My apologies. Cue it up again. Let's do it again. Get ready, Bell. You're gonna in for a problem. That's exactly right. How in the hell the FBI is so, I don't want to say worthless. Why not? It's true. Well, I understand that there's some good work that they do. I understand in field offices around the United States of America that they're trying to do their best to help with the scourge of human trafficking and other things. And so I don't want to, I don't want to cast that broad of a net, but my goodness gracious, the leadership of the FBI. How embarrassing. So was it not a coordinated effort on the part of the FBI to raid both of his properties? Yes or no? Three properties? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. But you don't figure out how to make sure that he can't get out of the country? If you're investigating himself, if you're investigating Sean P. Diddy Combs, who has in entertainment circles, long been thought to be a pedophile, allegedly. How in the world do you not lock that down and make sure that he doesn't get the hell out of there? Which apparently he got the hell out of there. 8709 very expertly puts both stories together while we're on Conspiracy Theory Tuesday saying, this major human trafficking story comes out and a few hours later, a container ship wipes out an entire mile and a half of bridge. That's suspicious. 
be right about it too. I think it was Bigfoot. Bigfoot on top of the Loch Ness monster says sixty two ninety two, and maybe you're right. Giant magnets. You know, oh, yeah, you put a magnet under the pier. You put a magnet, stick a magnet next to the ship. The ship, oh, boom. Ken Tibbetts said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to read your last name there, Ken. It just kind of popped out. Ken writes in and says, I was in Florida in 1980 when a ship hit the Skyway. You know what we said back then? You know what they said back then? Ship hit a bridge. And it was true. We live in the era of conspiracy theory, unabated conspiracy theory online. You need to understand when to dismiss certain things. You don't have to believe everything that some jackass says online, folks. Come on. Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's gather information. Let's make sure that we're getting what we believe to be accurate information. Let's vet through that information. Let's get to where the facts lead us. Let's raise questions when questions need to be raised. Let, let's demand answers when answers ought to be given. And let's move on from there. Let's not dabble in this, oh, it was an electronic magnetic pulse and it's a test run for later on this year when they're going to do an electronic magnet. Lizard people. I just don't understand. I understand conspiracy theorists that they get a, a glee out of thinking that they know information that nobody else knows. And it makes, because typically speaking, real, real down in the dirt conspiracy theorists, they don't really have a life that they enjoy. They don't have a life that they enjoy living. And so they have to get enjoyment some way exterior to their life. And they oftentimes get that enjoyment out of coming up with these conspiracy theories that make themselves feel superior to everyone else and it simultaneously it does two things they feel better than everyone else because they know what's really going on and it gives them an excuse why why their life has not happened in the way that they wanted it to happen it, it gives them the ultimate excuse well if there are powers that be the grand they if the grand they are controlling things well i know the grand they are controlling things therefore obviously the grand de they they're going to keep me down they're going to hold me down. They're not going to allow me to accomplish those things that I wanted to accomplish in life. It's the biggest excuse. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't shadowy figures that try to do shadowy things. That doesn't mean that some conspiracy theories are not borne out and we ultimately discover that they have truth inside of them. And many conspiracy theories have granules of truth that kind of hold the conspiracy theory together. It's like an egg in a crab cake. Huh? That is a Boston, Ma Maryland reference. Damn, I'm good. I don't get it. Egg in a crab cake. Yeah. What's that mean? The egg's the binder that holds the crab cake together. Man. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Without that, the crab cake falls apart in pan. Just like the conspiracy theory. Circle it back to Boston. Y'all don't deserve me. Six sixty seven twenty eight has now come up with my favorite. <laughs> Members Nutrition Super Tech Slide is up and running. Let me get the pleasantries out of the way real quick. Sixty seven twenty eight says all of this happened to cover up the huge Phil Williams story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's big, baby. Phil Williams has undercovered the fact that there are individuals that go to the General Assembly and try to get members of the General Assembly to vote in a manner consistent with the issue that they're working on. whoop -a -dee -doo! The conspiracy theorists are calling them lobbyists. <laughs> what? That's a new word. How do you, how do you, do you spell, how do you spell that? That's a new word. L-I-Z-A-R-D. <laughs> I thought you were going to start it with ERT. Uh, anyway, that's the main story that we're covering today. I'm giddy and in a mood. It's 1218 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Okay, let me tell you how you can watch or listen to this radio show. And I, I hope you do for the full three hours. We're on 99.7 FM all throughout Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, and Northern Alabama. You can find us on your internet streaming platform of your choosing, whatever one you use, whether it's, I don't know, iHeart, Spotify, whatever it is. If you stream Music, news, or information on a platform, you can find us, Supertalk 99.7 WTN. Download us and take you 
Take us where you go. You can also find our app right there on your app store, Super Talk 99.7 WTN, and then there's Super Talk TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, we call it a headless spell, headless spell, because headless spell refuses to participate on Super Talk TV. We imagine it's because of the multiple warrants. It's episode 539 of to our imagine. proceedings today. It's because of the multiple okay, warrants. Okay, it's because of the multiple warrants. It's episode 539 on this March 26, 2024, and today's television episode is entitled... Matt Murphy, the container ship to your political bridge. Hold oh. tight. Libertarian lunch, noon to three. Tip your server. Yeah. Second show's non-smoky. So, we expect that there will be a news conference at some point during our portion of the day. I think, okay, they're now saying it's going to be at 1.30. So, we'll carry that as we can live at 1.30 Central Time on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. 1.30, 1.35, thereabouts. Uh, we will carry that for you because many of you are concerned about what's going on. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott said in a press conference earlier today, as search and rescue efforts continued, that the container shipper that caused the major collapse of the bridge in Baltimore issued a mayday call before he actually hit the bridge, indicating that he had lost power shortly before he struck the bridge's piling allowing state officials to close the bridge to traffic in a move that probably saved multiple lives. You can see in the horrifying video of the scene, and if you go online, you can find it. This is incredible. You see the cars just going across the bridge as the shipping container is approaching the bridge. You see the shipping container lose its power. One would expect that's the point. Conspiracy theories aside, I mean, we'll figure out why power was lost. And maybe maybe it was, to, I mean, it could be anything. I'm not dismissing any of these theories. I'm saying that none of you actually know. It's just wild speculation on the part of all of us right now. So you see the power go out on this huge ship, this cargo ship carrying all of these shipping containers. One would assume that it was at that point that the captain of the ship declared a mayday and alerted authorities regarding the bridge that they needed to stop anyone from crossing the bridge because they had no idea if they were going to have control of the ship or not. It was at that point that workers on the bridge stopped. It was a part of I uh, Interstate 695, which is a loop around Baltimore. Happened about 1.30 in the morning on the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Caused the central section of the bridge... It's a 1.6 mile bridge and the central section has toppled into the water. The bridges, uh, the ship's lights, I should say, can be seen cycling on and off moments before it struck, indicating that it had major power issues. Federal, state and local authorities are coordinating search and rescue efforts. Uh, Maryland Transportation Secretary Paul uh, Wiedenfield, or Wieden, yeah, Wiedenfield, uh, said eight people on the bri were on the bridge when it collapsed and two of those individuals were rescued. One of them's in the hospital. The other did not suffer injuries. Six remain unaccounted for. Can you be? Can you imagine being the person that didn't suffer the injuries? My goodness gracious! When you're watching the video, there is one point in the video right before he hits the piling where you see a good five or six cars on the bridge, and you're there. One of them is like a semi, and you and that guy's got to be thinking, "Holy crap! How close did I just come to buying it?" Because he literally gets over the bridge just seconds before it comes down. You know, life is all about awareness of missed opportunities in some ways, but there is a hidden unawareness of the times in our lives where we were moments away from or inches away from death and we'll never know it. We'll never know it. I saw an interview with, it, it, it's rare that you do have an awareness of these moments. Give you an example. Seth McFarland, and there are several yeah, of these examples, example. but I'll give you an example. Seth McFarland, uh, who was, who is the creator of Family Guy, amongst other things, he was slated to be on one of the planes that crashed into the Twin Towers. I think it was the second plane, and I forget which number that was. I think it was Flight 11, but I'm not sure. And he's given interviews about this and admitted that he was partying the night before in New York that he woke up to a phone call from his agent. Are you at the airport yet? No, my gosh, your flight's about to get, get out of here, go. You got to get to that flight. 
he rushed to the airport and missed the flight. He would have been on the plane that crashed into one of the World Trade Center towers. Having that level of awareness about that sort of thing is rare in life. How many times do we miss a light and we have to sit there at the red light and we are blissfully unaware that if our presence had existed beyond the red light, if we had made the light, that we might crash into the semi-truck that's plowing through the next red light and we're gone. We don't know. Those cars that passed that way moments, seconds before this accident happened, they well know how lucky they are. The Dolly is a Singapore-flagged container ship managed by Synergy Marine Group, according to ship tracking data reviewed by Reuters News. 25 after the hour, Super Talk 99.7, taking your calls all afternoon long, 615-737-9986. Big show. I'll tell you all about it next. I am so proud to be affiliated with Jeff, who's the owner of Members Nutrition, and the rest of the crew uh, with Members Nutrition. I'm proud because I sat down with them, and they told me about their mission statement. They believe in empowering you as individuals and taking charge of your health and your well-being on a day-to-day basis. They believe, as I do, that we're over-medicated. They believe, as I do, that God created the natural things on this planet Earth to help us overcome so many of the issues that we find ourselves afflicted with in life. That's why vitamins and supplements are so wonderful and so essential to good health. And we believe in finding those effective supplements and vitamins for a lower price point than they're available at most of the big box stores or most of the retail Retail shelves. That's where Members Nutrition comes to be. Right now, go to Members Nutrition and look at men's health, women's health, some of the other categories that they have available for you on the Members Nutrition website. And know this, the price point that you see there on the website is going to be lower than you typically see in any store, and the quality of the product is higher. They're made right here in the USA. That's important to me. Secondarily, right now as an introductory offer at checkout, they're going to cut another 50% off the cost of that item. Come on, man. It's time to stock up with Members Nutrition. Let's go. MembersNutrition.com. That's MembersNutrition.com. Tell them Matt Murphy sent you to the one and only Members Nutrition.
Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy. How well are you sleeping? Do you not know? Have you asked your partner about your sleep habits? Do they tell you that you snore? Are you keeping your partner up at night? Well, if any of these things sound familiar, if you're tired and groggy and you don't know why, the possibility exists that you might have sleep apnea. For me, I would have told you absolutely not. No, I don't snore that much. No, thank you. But I talked to Dr. Stephen Poss and the Sleep Apnea and TMJ Solutions Center. He said, Murph, maybe you need to get a, a sleep test uh, just to see. And so I did. And here you go. I have moderate sleep apnea, almost severe sleep apnea, but I'm being aided by the incredible sleep apnea appliance created by Dr. Stephen Poss and his team at the Sleep Apnea and TMJ Solutions Center. 25% of adults have sleep apnea and they don't even know it. I was one of those adults. Now I'm sleeping better. I do feel more energetic in the mornings. I'm telling you, I'm feeling the results. And the wife says that I'm not snoring at all. Dr. Pons has advanced training, even teaches others. He has two offices to serve you in Brentwood and Murfreesboro, and they take your insurance. Whether it's Aetna, BCBS, Cigna, United Healthcare, or TRICARE for the military, they are in network with you. Call Dr. Poss today, or better yet, go online at drposs.com, D-R-P-O-S-S.com. Tell them Matt Murphy sent you. Tell them how happy I am with my appliance, and ask about yours at the Sleep Apnea and TMJ Solution Center. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It is just before the bottom of the hour. Thank you for being around. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. So the Francis Scott Key Bridge is no more. And we're asking for your theories about how this all happened. Now, understand, I'm, I, I'm hesitant to do all of this because I understand it's a very serious deal. And there are people expected to be found dead. Uh, with six still remaining unaccounted for, one would expect that they went into the water and they're not going to come out of the water alive. And that's sad. Uh, so nobody is dismissing that. It's a very serious subject. At the same time, uh, there's a lot of ways to tackle the subject, one being obviously infrastructure needs and whether our transportation secretary is too worried about going off to maternity leave for he and his husband. Would it be paternity leave, I guess? There's yeah. no, there's no maternity. Yeah. Double yeah. maternity, and whatever. I understand that was a couple of years ago. You don't need to at me, bro. The um, the transportation secretary seems to be more worried about racist bridges and racist roadways than he is about protecting American infrastructure. I mean, this is on him. All of the airline nonsense ultimately from a government standpoint leads to the transportation secretary. All of this, oh, the door blew out and the thing blew off and... All of that leads back from a government safety and regulatory standpoint to the Secretary of Transportation, does it not? And now this begs the question, what, what are our fail-safes with regard to shipping and cargo ships in the United States of America and our major ports of entry? Secondarily, how safe are our bridges? Most of our bridges are over 50 years old. I understand that they were constructed well. I understand they were constructed to last. They're not constructed to last forever. Instead of wasting billions of dollars on nonsensical, ridiculous pork barrel programs like passed recently by our Republican friends in the House of Representatives, <clears throat> instead of passing, quote-unquote, infrastructure bills that do nothing to actually protect the infrastructure of the United States of America, as Joe Biden's been running around clapping himself on the back about, maybe we look into some of these needs. We were told they put this huge package of infrastructure together, and I have yet to see it. It's 1233 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Hello, friends. Matt Murphy here for Tennessee Men's Clinic. Since 2014, that's a decade now, the Tennessee Men's Clinic has been working to serve men in the Nashville area and the surrounding Middle Tennessee zone. Tennessee Men's Clinic can help you find that energy that you've been missing. If you've noticed you're lethargic or run down and you don't know why, this is, should be a part of the process. Allow Tennessee Men's Clinic to look at what your lifestyle is like, look at what you can and cannot do, get some blood work, find out what's going on inside of your body, and see if there's a recipe for success. You know, a lot of times over the life of a man, you know, our, our T levels as a nation have gone down. And sadly, if your level goes down, oftentimes you don't know that. And you just think, well, I'm just middle-aged. I mean, that's the way life goes. Well, what if you knew those numbers and knew that you could get those numbers back up to where they ought to be? What if I told you that that's what Tennessee Men's Clinic does? So whether it's gains in the gym, whether it's loss of muscle mass, whether you feel tired or grumpy, maybe there's some bedroom activities that, you know, are, are a little be- are a little worse than better. Well, it's time to call Tennessee Men's Clinic. TennesseeMensClinic.com or Give them a call at 615-208-9090 to schedule your appointment today. Two locations, one's in Midtown Nashville, been there since 2014. The other opened last year in Cool Springs. It's Tennessee Men's Clinic, 615-208-9090. I had it on. I've got a long list of things to do today. By the way, it's the Matt Murphy Show, Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Let me give you a little bit of the rundown before we get to some of your calls and comments. 615-737-9986. I give that number often and as quickly as possible just to keep you on your toes. 615-737-9986. That is either the number for our telephone lines, turn a monologue into a dialogue, or you can also uh, join us on the Members Nutrition Super Text Line. You're invited to do that. A little bit of uh, my list today. Haiti's not the only country that's dying. Cuba is too. Have you know, have you, does anybody know that Cuba's starving to death? Cuba has... It's not possible. They have socialism down there. They feed everybody. They've long been propped up by socialists around the globe. And many of those socialist countries around the globe can no longer prop them up because 
Some of these communist slash socialist countries are either entangled in economic depressions of their own, China, wars, Russia, or uh, economic collapse, Venezuela. So there's no longer nations around the globe that are willing to prop up Cuba as a failed nation state. Now, there are some that would suggest that this is America's problem because of the embargoes that America has had on Cuba since the 1950s. I guess it was the 1950s, 1960s. Under the Obama administration, they significantly lessened those, those rules and regulations regarding the embargo. And it got further lessened uh, over the subsequent 10 years or so. I can hear you typing. Thank you. Um, I, I'm just just letting you know. I just did, I know you. You're like, son of a... And then there it is on the radio. Yeah. Um, so we got that going on uh, on my list to talk about. John Kennedy is a hoot. I didn't get to this yesterday, but if you've missed, I probably will not play this because there's so much going on I can expect uh, that we'll run out of time before we are able. But do yourself a favor and look up Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana and his exchange with this skier on the floor of the United States Senate with regard to climate change testimony. He was called as an expert Democrat witness. And have you seen it, Bell? It's, it's so good. It, it's I, it's cringy. It's, del it's delicious. It is so cringy. It's I mean, delicious. it's so cringy. I mean, the guy just embarrasses himself. And and the thing about it is Kennedy is just so calm and so matter of fact. Oh, just, you're, yeah, yeah, no, you're here as an expert witness. We're just... Yeah, we just got some questions. Got to just if you guys uh, tell me what uh, tell me what CO two is, what's carbon dioxide, and from there it gets even better. Is carbon dioxide a significant portion of our? Oh yes, very significant. Actually, it's not. Oh well, I guess it's not. It's and so he good. Keeps, he keeps saying, "Well, I'm not an expert on that." Well, then what? <laughs> the, well, it, it it goes to show you that these things are a huge waste of time. They're performative, and they're nonsense. It's nonsense that the Democrats called this guy. I'm sure he's a great skier. Oh, well, man, I'm the slopes, man. I can't get on the slopes like I used to get on the slopes because of climate change, man. I would love to take credit for this joke. I cannot in good conscience, conscience because it's too good. But Gutfeld last night said, look, if you wanted an expert on white powder, and then they popped up Hunter Biden's picture. It's like, what? <laughs> Gutfeld has got some great writers. <laughs> anyway, uh, go watch John Kennedy destroy this guy. It is, uh, it's, it's five minutes of heaven. I do want to talk in a serious way about the United Nations vote uh, that was taken. Joe Biden is caving to extremists in an election year regarding the Israel-Palestinian conflict. I want to talk about that today. Uh, we'll talk about the Boston Task Force on Reparations as time allows. I have it on my list to talk to Mac Morey at some point over the course of the day about a couple of the sports-related issues, including new NFL rules, including this Otani. Have you seen this? This guy, uh, the Dodgers guy, this Otani guy. We might get into that. Also, Kelsey and uh, Tay Tay were seen. Paparazzi took some photos of them smooching. That's big news. Are they a couple? Uh, that's what I'm told. Wow. That's what I'm talking. Th I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a psychological operation, designed to get Joe Biden reelected for president. But whatever. MSNBC is not taking the Ronna McDaniel news well, and they're not taking the Trump victory in New York City well either. The the Rachel Maddow, Maddow Rachel Maddow meltdown, which is difficult to say, is also delicious. And then some local things involving our good buddy Phil Williams of Channel 5 News, which I'll play some of that for you in the 1 o'clock hour. You on the phones as well, 615-737-9986. Lindsay is next up in Pleasant Hills. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? I'm good, Matt. How are you? I'm wonderful. What's on your mind? Well, uh, you were talking about whether you stop or go at the red light and how, you know, you never know how fast life could be over just like that um i think the first time i realized i was invincible or not invincible rather was when i was like a teenager i'd met these four people and just met them and went out with them 
one weekend, and they ran off the road drinking and driving. And we were all okay, but the very next weekend, those same four people ran off a bridge drinking and driving, and all four of them died. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sadly, it happens. Absolutely. There are sinkholes. There are plenty of close calls out there. But, yeah, that came to mind when you were saying you just never know. Like that poor semi that just barely made it across the bridge. No, the uh, the video, and you've seen it, no doubt, Lindsay, the video of some of these vehicles. And, I mean, and you know, it, it, it reminds me of the song, the Garth Brooks song, I forget who wrote it, Unanswered Prayers. You know, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Sometimes we want something to happen, but we don't understand what the full consequences might be. And God knows better. Sometimes we walk ourselves into tragic situations. Sometimes we just avoid uh, tragic circumstances or tragic situations. And, and in the blink of an eye, one can become the other or one can become the other. Very scary. Thank you for the call, Lindsay. I do appreciate it. Um, all right. Many of you have voted. And uh, this is freaky fast how fast this has happened. We're now being told that NBC News is reportedly planning to drop Ronna McDaniel. Wonder how that happened. Wonder how that happened. So if you've not followed this, it is apparently a belief on the part of these elitist and mainstream media that they get to decide which Republicans you get to see. This is a part of a concerted effort on their part to convince you, as I said yesterday, that you're crazy. That's what they want to do. They want to convince you that you're insane. Now, if it's time to fire all of these political interlopers that have found themselves, these operatives that have found themselves immersed in mainstream media, because that was the big objection, that Ronna McDaniel was head of the RNC, and how dare NBC hire her as a consultant? How dare NBC hire her? You know, that's what these organizations do. I don't know how the money works there. You know, Brian Wilson might know, because he was a part of Fox News for so many years. But they, they hire these consultants to be on call or I don't know if they have specific shows that they go on or how these things are done. But you have various consultants that are ready to be on panels on these very, um, on the 24-hour networks, right? And so you might see Michael Steele on one or you might see Ronna McDaniel on one or you might see, you know, a former representative, Republican. I mean, you they love the Liz, they love the Never Trumpers, right? They love Liz Cheney. They love that other schmucko. What was his name? I, I guess he served his country um, with distinction, but then he became a congressman. I, I thank, I can see his face and I thankfully have forgotten his name. Um, he was right there in bed. He was on the same uh, stupid Jan 6 panel with Liz Cheney. And now is out of Congress. Well, they love him on CNN or MSNBC or some of these other liberal channels. They love weak Republicans because they get to present them as Republicans. They present them as mainstream Republicans, although they're not. They're moderates. They're squishes. But that's the only thing that they want. And if you support Donald Trump, you are either on the airwaves of many of these so-called media organizations for them to destroy you, to make you look bad, for them to fuss at you. Or you're not on there at all. Well, maybe it's time to clean house. Maybe it's time to tell Al Sharpton and Nicole Wallace and Joe Scarborough and Michael Steele and Jen Psaki and George Stepanopoulos and Jake Tapper and F. Chuck Todd. That's just off the top of my head. Maybe it's time to tell those folks to go pound sand that they don't belong on network television anymore or television at all anymore because that's their standard. Ronna McDaniel had the audacity to speak for RNC. And for that, NBC couldn't handle it. I'll be joined by former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel in her first interview since stepping down as party chair. In full disclosure to our viewers, this interview was scheduled weeks before it was announced that McDaniel would become a paid NBC News contributor. This will be a news interview, and I was not involved in her hiring. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting. 
mm. had been met with character assassination. We weren't asked our opinion of the hiring, but if we were... Uh, but, by the way, the RNC represents the national... I mean, the Republican Party. It's the Republican National Committee. I don't belong to the Republican Party. I don't speak for the Republican Party, and I don't need to. But roughly 40% of the country consider themselves Republicans, and more than 40% of the country in any given election will vote for the Republican Party. Should there not be a level of representation? If the Republican Party is frustrated with the mainstream media, maybe that's on you to reflect on how you're reporting the news as opposed to on them. But that's not the way they see it. It's as if F. Chuck Todd and his minions think that they get to decide how Republicans should think and feel about certain things. I mean, this is the same guy. F. Chuck Todd said this on social media, on the X machine. The issue isn't about ideology. It's about basic truth. Those thinking to make this a left-right issue are being intentionally dishonest. This is about whether honest journalists are supposed to lend their credibility to someone who intentionally tried to ruin ours. And to F. Chuck Todd, I say this. Friend, as soon as you publicly apologize for fostering, relishing, cultivating, and growing the ridiculous Trump-Russia collusion campaign, I'll give one damn about your ego. I'll give one damn about your credibility. You go on NBC News and you apologize to your viewers for spending two and a half years lying to the American people about the Russian collusion hoax. And when you do that, I'll start caring about your ego and your credibility again. Until then, you can go pound sand, pal. Nobody gives a crap about you. This isn't about you. We would have strongly objected to it. NBC News, either wittingly or unwittingly, is teaching election deniers that what they can do stretches well beyond appearing on our air in interviews to peddle lies about the sanctity and integrity of our elections, but that they can do that as one of us, as badge-carrying employees of NBC News. There is an easy way to avoid the controversy NBC News has stumbled into. Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. She Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. That's um That's a laugher. Literally backed an illegal scheme to steal an election in the state of Michigan. That is the type of experience that Ron and McDaniel brings to the table. And that experience does not get us to a deeper understanding of anything in the public debate. I want to associate myself with all my colleagues, both at MSNBC and at NBC News, who, who have voiced loud and principled objections to our company putting on the payroll someone who hasn't just attacked us as journalists, um, but someone who is part of an ongoing project to get rid of our system of government. Uh which, which is laughable. I mean, that's a lie. That's not true. Ronna McDaniel is not part of an ongoing project to get rid of our system of government. Donald Trump is not part of an ongoing project to get rid of our system of government. It is a lie created by them, fostered by them, regurgitated by them, believed by no one with any sense or any brain. If you don't like Donald Trump, you don't have to lie about Donald Trump to not like Donald Trump. And no one is expecting that MSNBC will be anything other than what it is, a left-wing propaganda machine. But this suggestion that the reason they're being the good stewards of American democracy by refusing to allow different points of view on their airwaves. For years, these same people, and I, I just use this as one example, I could give you many others, for years, these same people insisted that Donald Trump stole the 2016 election by colluding with Russia. For years, Chuck Todd presented this. He was presenting it in 2020 as fact when it would, was widely known that it was false. The FBI knew the Steele dossier was false. Robert Mueller knew the Steele dossier was false. And yet still, Chuck Todd was regurgitating that information to his viewers.
and he's not once received his comeuppance. There's a special place in political hell for these people. There was a time that they remember because they were babies in the womb back then and they were growing up in the journalistic nursery. They remember when it was NBC, ABC, CBS, and nothing else. WAPO, New York Times, all left-leaning. They hate the democratization of the news cycle. They hate it with every fiber of their being, which is why they lash out in the manner that they do. We're just fighting back here on The Murphy Show on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy. Let's talk about the Glock store. It's located off of Elm Hill Pike on Air Lane Drive. Do you know where that is? Minutes away from the airport. Minutes away from the sound of my voice and well worth the drive, friends. When you see the Glock store difference, you'll get it. I could tell you all about the retail side, all about the incredible Glocks and other guns that they have. They have handguns. They have long guns as well. I could tell you about the many, many different accessories, the clothing options, the concealed carry options. But I want to focus on the Shoot 270 rooms for a moment because they don't do lanes. They do rooms. They have multiple rooms, and you can have a trainer in every single one of them, and you will have a trainer in every single one of them. And that training is such a vital part of the Second Amendment and understanding how best to utilize your Second Amendment rights. Let's get a training session going today. It's one of the reasons that they separated the retail side, GlockStore.com, with the training side, Shoot270.com. So you can go to either website and find incredible, valuable information about what the Glock Store brings to Middle Tennessee. We are lucky to have the Glock Store here, and I am lucky to be able to tell you about them on a regular basis. So I encourage you to get over to the world, get over to the world famous Glock Store and see what they have to offer. It's GlockStore.com or ShootT70.com. ShootT70.com or GlockStore.com. Tell them Murphy sent you.
Hey folks, Matt Murphy here for YourHealthPlanMan.com. Pat Davis and his team understand healthcare in a way that I don't. I spoke with Pat Davis about my wife's coverage, and we got her a good plan. Thank you to Pat Davis and his team. I wouldn't have been able to do that because he can shop through a variety of insurance companies, and he does. He's like your insurance concierge. You're looking for a good meal, he can point you in the right direction, finding you exactly the type of meal that you want at the price point that you want it, and he gets you the reservations for the meal. That's kind of what he does with health care. Your, uh, your health plan man .com, I should say, their freedom of choice plan uh, puts most of the coverage up front with no deductible. It is one of the many options that you have. You pick your doctors. It's 30 to 60% lower cost than Obamacare. If uh, The plan is also available year-round. Uh, to those that qualify. These plans don't have anything to do with your income. There's no surprise at tax time. Let's get with Pat Davis and his team. Find out if you're paying more than you should, if you're unsatisfied for whatever reason with your current health coverage, or if you don't have any coverage, if you're on COBRA and whatnot, then it's time to make the call that so many others have made to yourhealthplanman.com. Go online to research him, yourhealthplanman.com, or give a call, 855-4-PLANMAN, 855-475-2662 for your health plan man, yourhealthplanman.com. One down already, two to go. It's Matt Murphy and the Matt Murphy Show on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I've taken a moment to calm down just a little bit. Don't do it. Don't do it. You stay fired up, mister. Hey, I just looked online. I just looked online. Dan Mandis won an award today. Did you see that? What? No, I did not. What, 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 he won what? Uh, for one of his... Uh, for one of the great advertisers that he works with on a day-to-day -day basis. He won like a national award, 2023 Endorser of the Year. <laughs> Seriously? I am from, wow. From this, my congratulations to yeah, Dan Way Madison, to go, Dan. Nashville's Morning News. I appreciate uh, I'm, I'm glad that I saw that. And I am proud uh, to work with Mandis. Along. Chris Hand will be back tomorrow. Matt Murphy here. Brian Wilson this afternoon from 3 until 7 o'clock. It's part of live and local conversation. Information fueled and opinion driven on Super Talk 99.7. WTN. So the NBC group, I don't know what their ownership structure is. I could find out if I wanted to. I don't. I don't. Um, I think it's a Un failed structure. Universal owns them. Well, see, I want to know, I mean, the structure of NBC News and how they structure their news department. Oh, I and, see what you know, All of that. I, I don't. I don't know, and I don't care. Because whoever thinks that they're in charge, they're not in charge. Apparently, the inmates are in charge, or at least the talent is in charge, and making the decisions for NBC about how they conduct themselves. And they have run a coup. CNN did this too. These organizations that. Do not value your life experience. Do not value your perspective on political news or the world at large. And do not believe that your perspective and your viewpoint, especially if you support Donald Trump, is worthy. Those people are trying to gaslight you into believing that you're all by yourself. I said it yesterday. You're all alone. No one else thinks like you. This is the way real mainstream Americans who are Republicans believe. Here's Liz Cheney. This is the way real Republicans believe. Here's Adam Kinzinger. This is the way real Republicans believe. Here's, name your never Trumper here, Bill Crystal. Oh, look, Bill Crystal, great Republican. Look at him. I remember, and th this is not new. They're just more upfront with it. Example. They loved John McCain. Remember? John McCain was a maverick. John McCain was an American treasure and an American hero. They loved John McCain because sometimes John McCain felt the need to buck the prevailing mood and position of his own political party, the Republican Party. And he would sidle up to the Democrats. They loved John McCain because he was a part of the Gang of Eight. 
that wanted to amnitize millions of illegal aliens. They loved John McCain because he would stand up to the powers that be. And he defended Obama when he was unfairly attacked. He did. And John McCain stood up to Donald Trump. And they, so they, they came back to loving him. You know when they didn't love John McCain? When John McCain had the audacity to run for president of the United States in 2008, they called John McCain an old fool. They said he was too old for the presidency. They insinuated that he, because of his time in custody... During the Vietnam War, during his time as a war prisoner during the Vietnam War, they suggested in 08. I remember this like it was yesterday. I'm elephantine. I remember these things. I was on air when they did it. They insinuated and suggested that John McCain could have been compromised in the theater of war and as a result could not act as commander in chief. That's when he was running for president of the United States. They did the same with Mitt Romney, squishy Mitt. Mitt Romney was a darling of the Democrats. Hell, he won as a Republican in the state of Massachusetts as governor. Democrats love this guy. The liberal media love this guy until he ran for president. And then suddenly they're dredging up old stories about this guy who was gay, who's dead now, whose hair John, uh, Mitt Romney cut and Mitt Romney was... The insinuation was he was responsible for it. His dog's on top of his car. Now, I'm no fan of John McCain. I'm no fan of Mitt Romney, but we can still recognize that these things went on because they have a particular way of viewing Republicans. They're either useful to their purposes or they are enemies of democracy, and they've been doing that forever, long before Donald Trump came on the scene. It just ratcheted up with Donald Trump. It came to a boil with Donald Trump. So now, what the mainstream media is telling you, truly, is that it is impermissible to be of the perspective that garbage went on in the 2020 election cycle that tilted the election for Joe Biden. And anyone that doesn't understand that there were actions exterior to the laws of this country and the various states that conduct the presidential election that tilted said election, you've not looked into this. I mean, I'll, I'll give you the example. And look, everything's on the up and up. Nothing can be done from a judicial standpoint. But it is a fact that the representatives elected in the state of Pennsylvania said that we don't need to count votes that are postmarked after the date certain that they need to be postmarked. And they counted them anyway. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court allowed that to happen. And we don't know how many of those votes there were. We don't know whether or not it tilted the election. But we know that there were thousands upon thousands of votes that were counted that should not have been counted because they came in and they were postmarked after the date that they were supposed to be shut down. There was a date. That it, everything up until this date postmarked will be taken. Anything after that date can't be taken because those are mail-in ballots that are considered to be too late to be counted. They put those in there anyway. I use that as one of many examples of why there's so much concern with the manner in which the 2020 election cycle was conducted. Look, that's water under the bridge. Joe Biden is the current president of the United States as much as I hate that. And as much as I want to dispatch him from that role. But what the mainstream media is attempting to convince you, the same media that has yet to apologize for their role in cultivating the Donald Trump as an illegitimate president in 2016, which they did. Hillary Clinton claimed him illegitimate in 2016, colluded with the Russians. For two and a half years, he had to fight that battle. Robert Mueller found nothing. And they've yet to apologize about that. You want to hear that? I mean, as of 2020, this same magnanimous, pompous you-know-what was doing this. This is in June of 2020. Meet the press, F. Chuck Todd. Let me ask you this. Do you, do you think that part of the, that the president is afraid to make Putin mad because maybe Putin did help him win the election and he doesn't want to make him mad for 2020? He was asking that question of John Bolton. 
John Bolton says. Uh, honestly, I don't think there's evidence for that. And, and uh, You know why? Because there isn't evidence for that. And for two years, Robert Mueller looked for evidence for that, and he couldn't find any evidence of that. What? And, and, and Chuck Todd's sitting there on national television and regurgitating the lie in the form of, hey, man, I'm just asking questions, regurgitating the lie, and now you're going to come at me and tell me that we can't have Ronna McDaniel on these airwaves because she said things that we disagree with. Give me a break, man. I believe that the mainstream media is a more dangerous entity than the political Democrats because the mainstream media knows what they're doing. I think many in the Democrat Party are true believers, maybe not some at the higher echelons, but many of them are true believers. Chuck Todd and the rest of his ilk, they, they know what they're doing, and it's disgusting. They are or want to be state media where we present the statist point of view. I mean, tell me how different this is from Russian state media. We present our point of view on the news. We present it as the only point of view on the news. We completely ignore information that goes against our point of view on the news. And we refuse, refuse to allow anyone that has an opposing point of view on our panels or anywhere on our networks. The only way that they achieve the set, the only way that they get seated is if they come on for us to attack them. And then any other political figures or any other figures that we agree with, we're going to bring them on and we're going to molly coddle their point of view. How is that not state-run media? Now, look, there are plenty of places for you to go to get your news. I'm just here to point it out. That this is not the way to run a railroad, and they have completely lost the charter of the fourth estate at this stage. It's 115 Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Would love to hear from you. 615 737 9986. 615 737 WWTN. Kevin writes in, why was that? Um, Pamela's doing better. Someone's asking about Pamela. Pamela had a knee issue, uh, but she's doing better. Yeah, she had the whole thing replaced. Yeah, I know. And she kind of overdid it last week. And uh, she had a lot of activities going on at the state capitol. And that's a tough slog for somebody that's overcoming knee surgery. So, Especially with all those damn stairs out there and everything. And no question about that. So uh, we're thinking about Pamela. She'll be back up and running and back on both legs uh, coming up uh, very, very soon. 8523, the MSM is the enemy of the people. You're right about that, buddy. I do not believe that they act in the best interest of the American people because they've lost their way and they've lost their charter. And at very least, look, I'm opinionated. This is opinion-based radio. I don't shy away from that. I have strong opinions about the way I believe, the way that the country should go. You hear that on a daily basis. You either, And that's why I get so much guff from so many people because sometimes you disagree with me. And when you, look, when I'm, your, when I'm your bulldog, when I'm your pit bull, you love me. When I am a champion of a cause that you believe in, you love me. When I'm not, you don't. And I get that because I'm my own guy. But I don't shy away from our subjective nature of our show. And when I'm presenting facts or presenting the news, I tell you that. When I'm presenting opinion, you know that too. These dunderheads, they completely ignore broad swaths of opinion dismiss it or think that you should subjugate it and not get it out to the American people and then pretend that their opinion is the only opinion. It's disingenuous. They treat us like we're dumb and I hate it. It is the worst of politics, which is why I harp on it so much. I'll give you another example of how the media does this. The mainstream media, I had the story up for three days, and I didn't get to it, and I lost it, and I apologize for that. But there was a, there was a story out of Politico, I believe it was, indicating that as many as five separate national polls had Joe Biden leading Donald Trump. And this was a huge lead story, and, and I think I'm right when I say it's Politico that, uh, that presented this story which is a left-wing online publication. National polling 
indicates that Joe Biden remains in the lead over Donald Trump. Although that lead is very thin, that lead is important. Now, you regulars know my view on polls. Polls are useless unless we're voting today. I mean, I understand that they're not useless in as much as they give a snapshot of where the mood of the country is at any given moment. But any conversation that starts with if the election were happening today doesn't mean a lot to me because guess what's not happening today? The election. It's not happening today. It's happening in November. And for those reasons, plenty of things can change between now and then. So while a poll is a snapshot in time and I get it, I don't harp on them very much because we're not voting today. However, I do feel it incumbent upon me to point out the fallacy of this nonsense suggesting that Joe Biden is, quote unquote, in the lead and referring to national polls as a result. National polls mean nothing, nothing when it comes to the presidential election, nothing less than nothing. The nation does not vote. States vote. And the individual states pass on to their electors the state's desire as to how those electors are to act at the electoral college, and they do so, subsequent to the desires of the individual states. When you take a national poll, you are weighting the desires of California or New York or Illinois as an example, or Massachusetts or whatever, You're weighting those against the desires of the many, many other states, perhaps less populous states. And you're blending all of those answers together in a way that never happens when we go to the polls. We don't vote nationally. Therefore, the polls that poll nationally do not reflect the manner in which the outcome will happen. Does that make sense to everyone? So if I'm polling and I poll from based on population and I poll a bunch of people out of California, I mean, California is going to go heavily for Joe Biden or whoever the Democrat nominee is because California is a blue, blue state. California is just one state. When you blend and weight California for population purposes against I mean, this is the reason that we don't have a national election. And yes, a poll is just, as Jeff says, a stack of opinions, and I get that. But even in the, they, they use these national polls to try to help Joe Biden. When you look at the state-by-state -state polls, which I do with a fair amount of regularity, I don't talk about them very often on, on air, Donald Trump's up in all of them. Yet the headline is, Joe Biden continues to lead in a nationwide poll. Shut up. We don't vote nationwide, and you shouldn't poll nationwide. In Wisconsin, Trump's up by a point. In Arizona, he's up by five. In Georgia, he's up by five. In Michigan, he's up by three and a half. In Pennsylvania, he's up by a razor-thin margin of point two. In North Carolina, he's up four and a half. In Nevada, he's up three. Joe Biden's leading in none of those. Those are battleground states. And Donald Trump's in the lead in each one of them. So anytime between now and November or anytime in the rest of your life, when you are listening to a commentary about a presidential political race and someone starts quoting national polls, you can just stop listening because they don't matter. It's 22 after the hour on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy, and I want to talk to you for a moment about my buddy Mark and the Safe House. NashvilleSafeHouse.com is the website, NashvilleSafeHouse.com. Go there and see the incredible displays of safes they have on site on 4th Avenue South. They've got another warehouse full of safes as well. You will see some 200 or so right there in the 4th Avenue South location, and they have 
in some cases, over 400 at their warehouse. They have the safe ride for you. That's Mark's goal, right? Uh, he knows that you come from different backgrounds, different lifestyles. You might want different things out of your gun safe. You might want a jewelry safe or a corporate safe, a storm shelter, whatever you want. They've got it at Nashville Safe House. They've got the different brands, the different shapes and sizes. And right now, it is rebate season especially for Browning, but for many other brands, go by and see the incredible rebates you can get at Nashville Safe House. You can save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a safe from Nashville Safe House. Go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com or better yet, stop by on 4th Avenue South, see Mark and his team, tell them I sent you, and browse the many, many safes. They're right across the street from City Cemetery, convenient to anywhere within the sound of my voice. It's Nashville Safe House. Super Talk 99.7 WTN, Matt Murphy, and you, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Coming up in the 2 o'clock hour, the subject of a lot of local conversation in political circles, Tori Venable, who is the head of Americans for Prosperity Tennessee. It's a Tennessee grassroots uh, organization uh, whose parent organization is Americans for Prosperity, AFP. Uh, she will be with us. She was the subject of this huge, huge expose. By Phil Williams, who must uh, not have, I mean, I guess Phil has not gotten my multiple requests. He seems to be scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one. I suppose he's not gotten my multiple requests to, to go ahead and investigate Representative Justin Jones for the allegation that he covered up sexual assault in 2020, right? I guess that's, I guess that's off the table. I, I tried to follow up with him for you a couple of times, and then the, I think the last time he blocked me on Twitter. He doesn't like me. Right. Mm. It's hard to, hard Phil to has a habit of doing that. He likes to block people. He's not blocked me. He just ignores me, and that's fine. I'm just a, I'm just a nobody on a radio show. Phil has that attitude that we don't count. Talk radio hosts are just blathermouths that don't count. No, Phil I, counts I don't count you. He wants to be able to listen no, to. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he's got this big expose that um, uh, 
Starts off another secret recording obtained by News Channel 5 investigates reveals how Tennessee lawmakers are facing pressure to send your tax dollars to the state's private schools. In the recording, the lead lobbyist for a well-financed group lobbying for school vouchers warns a reluctant lawmaker that his job could be at stake if he doesn't vote the way she wants him to. And it goes on from there. I'll get more into this coming up after the bottom of the hour. Right now, I want to talk with Stephen out in Paris. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Hey, man. Good, good. How are you today? I'm doing well, Steve. Hope you are. Yeah, yeah all things considered, right? <laughs> doing about as well as I can. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get a comment out and see what you think, man. Uh, I was watching the news when I saw that... Um, it looked like a bunch of wild animals busting out of the zoo, but it was actually like a bunch of barbed wire fence and a and a big fence and national security guardsmen like standing there. And I'm sitting here looking at it thinking, okay, we got this. And then I'm sitting here watching all these maniacs running into our country like uh, it's a free shopping spree or something for them. And I'm sitting here thinking, what are these national guardsmen doing? You know, and I mean, it's like uh, – where are the water trucks, man, with the hoses or, or some 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 uh, tear gas or some? I mean, it's our military, right? They should have at least rubber bullets or some kind of something to stop these people from just running into our country once they break down these fences and stuff. So, I mean, what what can what can we do about this? I mean, you know, what I don't know who's giving them their orders, but I thought it was Texas and. Uh, you know, all I saw was a bunch of guys just standing around looking at each other while wild animals were running through. The best thing that we can do in the short term is to support the efforts of the Texas National Guard to do what we can to encourage the governor to send as many who want to go of the Tennessee National Guard to support their efforts and to support local police efforts in order to try to facilitate a semblance of orderly uh, prevention, prevention from individuals crossing the border. There's simply not an easy answer to your question while Joe Biden is the president of the United States because Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas has decided, I mean, they, they've decided to ignore the law. And in doing so, they have created a honeypot scenario where the illegal aliens know, regardless of their intent, that if they get to the border, if they get to the border, I mean, they, there's two types of them. One type wants to be caught because they just say asylum and they say, if I, if I go back to my country of origin, I'm going to be, my life's going to be put in danger and they get asylum. Or the type that doesn't want to get caught, and those are the worst of the worst because those are the fentanyl smugglers and the human smugglers and the human traffickers and right. those types of people. The, there's not a simple answer, but the simple answer in the short term is to support the Texas National Guard and the efforts of Greg Abbott and others in other states. Secondly, um, yeah. we've got to get Joe Biden out of office. Amen. Yeah, amen to that. I just wish uh, we could find out, like, um, through the chain of command, what are the rules? I mean, you know, once something like that happens, uh, there's got to be a way to stop them somehow. So, you know, I don't know if it, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can't just can't just shoot them, right? You don't want you don't want to just have to no. shoot them and kill them. But, but again, like what you said, this ain't the these people are breaking in and running in. Because they don't want to, they don't want to turn themselves in, and they don't want to be caught. So you know what would best. make it? It would not make it impossible, but you know what would make it a lot difficult, more difficult to get into the United States of America. Yeah, if we put landmines on the other side of the riverbank, but that can't happen either. Well, well, we don't have to do that. How about just a big wall? <laughs> yeah, I, huh. amen, man. Imagine I'm all that. For that. Imagine, imagine a big wall to prevent them from coming in. That's an interesting concept. Brent, Bill, we'll get to you in just a moment as we continue on the Matt Murphy Show. We'll break down this non-story by Phil Williams of News Channel 5 coming up in a second as well on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Hey friends, it's Matt Murphy here. When it comes to retirement planning and investment, I've told you for years now that I trust the Paul Winkler team, and I do. Ever since I've met with them, I've been blown away to see their approach, the painstaking care that they take to do things the right way. Now, because of that care, and because Paul Winkler is a fiduciary, I'm required to tell you that I'm paid for these ads. I'm a client of Paul's, but I haven't heard anyone else make those sorts of disclosures or declarations, but I can't speak for the other guys. I can only speak for Paul and the type of guy that Paul Winkler is and the type of company that they run. Paul and his team go above and beyond, follow the rules and do things the right way. It's how they approach their clients. It's how they approach your investment portfolio. That's why they use an academic approach to investment. It's just so different than anything else that I've seen in the past, and I think you'll feel the same way. I was absolutely blown away in the meetings that I've had, both as an endorser and as a client of Paul Winkler's. Their advisors don't work on commission. They have planning degrees, financial planning degrees. I'm convinced you schedule a meeting with them, you'll be blown away too. Check them out at paulwinkler.com. That's paulwinkler.com. Tell them Matt Murphy sent you. Super Talk 99.7 WTN, Matt Murphy and you. Bell, you were telling me something during the break, and I want to bring it to the table for full audience consumption. 137, by the way, on Super Talk on this Tuesday, March 26. Glad you're with us. It's episode 539. Hello, whether you're listening on the radio, listening on your app, or, li or watching and listening on Super Talk TV. Hello, how are you? YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, up and running right now. No Bell K. He's headless Bell. So... Joe Biden did a presser. I saw that he made a few remarks about the bridge collapse in Baltimore. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was hit by a cargo shipping a cargo ship full of shipping containers. And that ship apparently losing power or whatnot, hitting a pier, and there you go. Hitting one of the pilings that were driven down in the ocean floor bed, the bay floor bed. So Joe Biden has made an announcement already about repairing the bridge. Yeah, according to this tweet, and there's audio attached to it of his presser. It's a minute, nine seconds if you want to play it. He's uh, quoted as saying the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing 
the bridge. So he's announcing that the federal government, which is broke, is going to repair the entire cost of the bridge. Which will be a few billion dollars. There's no question. And I, my initial, does anybody else, I'll tell you what, I'll do it this way. And by the way, we're look, I'm looking at the presser right now. Can we go to this real quick? Yeah. Uh, with apologies to those of you on hold. We're going to go to this real quick. We'll uh, jip it, join in in progress, and we'll come back to you in just a moment. Uh, there's a press conference going on right now about the bridge collapse. Also with me is one of our newest board members. This is Alvin Brown, uh, and he, this is his training launch. So the NTSB arrived on People are dead, but let's talk about people training. Yes, yeah, fine. Uh, to investigate an accident involving a Singapore registered vessel, Dolly, D A L I. You're listening to Jennifer uh, Hamadi, the chairwoman the of the Keybridge in Baltimore, Maryland, at around 1 30 a.m. this morning. The vessel is uh, 985 feet long. It's a 95,000 gross ton container ship. Uh, I've seen uh, information about uh, crew members on board. We still need to verify the numbers of crew on board and their status. Under our memorandum of understanding with the Coast Guard, the NTSB is leading this investigation. The Coast Guard will support this investigation. Uh, our memorandum of understanding, for example, provides for uh, when an accident involves another mode of transportation uh, and other factors, the NTSB will lead that investigation. Now, I want to thank... All right, here's US what I'm going to do for Guard now because I value my career and this woman's slowly killing it. Bell, I know this is your favorite part of the job. Monitor that press conference and let me know if anything of note comes out of it while we move on with other things. It is a bridge that leads into the bay in Baltimore. It's called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's 1.6 miles long. Uh, the center portion of it was destroyed. Uh, it's 185 feet between the bridge and the water. Thank God. They stopped a few of the automobiles that were on the bridge prior to the collapse. Otherwise, it could have been a lot worse. Thank God it happened at 1.30 in the morning. This is not the first time something like this has happened. By the way, the I-40 bridge disaster, which happened in Oklahoma, I had forgotten about this, and a loyal listener, and I, if I had your name, I'd give you full credit, loyal listener. Thank you for this. Sent me the link. May 26th of 2002, so some 22 years ago, Joe Deedman, captain of the towboat Robert Love, was transporting barges on the Arkansas River while traversing the Kerr Reservoir. Deadman experienced a syncope. I don't know what that is. Commonly, oh, he, pa he passed out. A loss of consciousness, a syncope. He passed out and lost control of the towboat. This in turn caused the barge he was towing to collide with the pier off of I-40. Crossing the reservoir, a 580-foot section of the bridge collapsed, plunging into the water, raining heavily at the time of the collapse, but the rain subsided soon after. By the time the traffic stopped and individuals became aware of the missing road, eight passenger vehicles and three semi-trucks had fallen into the river or collapsed upon the bridge pieces. 14 people died. 11 others were injured when the automobiles and tractor trailers fell from the bridge. Very, very tragic. Obviously, this is a tragic situation as well, but not an unprecedented one. Katie is in Franklin next with a conversation about illegal alien. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. Hold on there. I'll get to you in a moment. Brent, I was about to skip you. My apologies. How are you, Brent? Uh, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. What's on your mind? So uh, trying to, I called in about one thing, and I've got three things since uh, you moved so fast to uh, speak to. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I've I'm been glad you're here. for 20 years, and it's a very famous thing that the Sky Bridge had a boat uh, run into a, a pylon, pillar, uh, whatever they call it. A Greyhound bus uh, plunged into the water. Mm. And uh, I don't know if you've ever gone on that bridge. It's super high. That's why they call it Sky Bridge, and 32 people died. Wow. 
Yeah. Secondly, I'd like to talk about the polls. Uh, I think it's important to note that real clear, and is it 528 or 538? Uh, both of them don't include many of these polls that the Democrats are touting as credi- credible polls. And they're both kind of left-leaning organizations, but not so much that don't want to uh, look like fools and they want to end up right. And they still have Trump up two points nationally. Is it a national third, poll or is that a, a – I've, I've not looked at 538. I look at RCP on occasion. I don't really – I don't really spend that much time in it, but on the 538 front, is that a national poll or are they taking all the states and kind of cobbling them together, or do you know? No, I don't I don't okay. know. They, they just, I'll check it they out. Do their I'll average. check it out. But no, yeah. it's a good it's a good point that some of these leftist polling organizations still want to maintain a level of credibility after November. Uh so they're not fudging the numbers and the and it still shows Trump ahead. I, I get your point. Yeah. Yes. And then uh thirdly, did Chuck Todd not get the uh memo? MSNBC's whole model is to get former Republicans on there to trash, uh, you know, Republicans. Uh, with Scarborough, Nicole Wallace, Schmidt, there's another guy that looks like Schmidt, can't keep the two bald-headed guys with the short gray beards apart, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they'll have Bill, I, I they'll, they love, like they you, love Bill Crystal. So, uh, they love having Bill Crystal on also. as a consultant, you know, and they yeah. they love having these... Uh, uh, Lincoln, uh, what is it, Lincoln Republicans or whatever they're called, the Lincoln Project. They love having those guys. Lincoln Project. That's um, it, yeah. on the and Because they claim to be Republican. Now they, they're Democrats. I mean, obviously, they're not Republicans. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, this is how they uh, shield themselves from criticism because they only present one side of the issue, and they claim to be presenting all sides of the issue by bringing these folks that call themselves Republicans, calling them mainstream Republicans when anyone – really knows that they're Those not people are just wanting the payola they'll say, they'll say whatever they're told to say yep that's right that's right yeah well thank good you, call sir. man hey brent thank you for calling in i appreciate you bill is in the borough next hey bill how are you i'm fine sir how are you i'm doing great thank you for your call i i have uh i called last week but i i couldn't get in i couldn't uh hold long enough but um i uh i am a former united states marine and we are trying to get up a group right now. We've got probably around five or six hundred uh, ready to go and uh, march on Washington. Uh, one of the things that I find just crazy, and you don't hear in the news, we've got um, so many of the young Chinese uh, military age men coming into this country when one thing has never been mentioned uh and i know this from my uh, my military service you don't just wake up one day and say hey i'm going to you know i live in i'm I'm chinese i'm gonna but you know i'm gonna head to the border and cross over and live in the united states from now on that just does not happen they're sent the other thing is with congress not being able to you know, uh, even agree on bathroom breaks um, and and trying to go after Biden through, you know, the uh, money that, you know, from Borisa, Bor- Borisma and his son and all that kind of stuff. Why can't we just impeach him on the fact of our border and him putting so many citizens of this country in harm's way? I mean, that's derelict you know, dereliction of duty right there. Why can't we move on that? And I'll hang up and listen to your... Yeah, well, uh, well, Bill, no, 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 keep listening because, I mean, we can move on that. You move on that at the polls. I mean, if you want to expedite this process as quickly as possible, then recognize the landscape around us. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Someone called in and said, we need to impeach... Biden right now. Well, let's talk about doing that. We have to identify the high crime or misdemeanor. Okay, I can probably point to some things that need to be investigated. You know, earning money for yourself or your family on the back of the United States of America and those sorts of things. Dereliction of duty, sure. That's a little more difficult to determine. 
But even if you got in a one vote majority Congress, even if you get every single person voting to impeach Joe Biden, as they did vote to impeach Donald Trump, you get to a Senate vote to convict because impeachment is basically like an indictment. As I said yesterday, impeachment is a political process. So to ignore the politics of it is to ignore the process. And politically, it's going nowhere. I wish it weren't so, but it is. You need 67 votes, 66 or 67 votes in the United States Senate to convict. And there simply aren't the votes. So it would be an exercise in futility. It would give the mainstream media an opportunity to focus on something other than the failures of the Biden administration. And especially in an election year, should we not focus on the real way that we can remove Joe Biden from power right now? which is to convince people that he is a failure as a president, which he is, and that Donald Trump's, certainly his first three years as president of the United States pre-COVID was moving us in the right direction to make America great again, and we need to embrace that. That's the way to defeat these people, defeat them at the ballot box, and I believe we will in November. And we can deal with the crimes of Hunter, Joe, James, and others in the aftermath of all of that, it's 150 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. All right, friends, in 2024, have you taken my advice and gone to the Dr. Gill Center, gotten checked out for $49? They will bring you in. They will sit you down. They'll consult with you. They'll talk about your pain, the nature of the pain, where it emanates from. They'll give you some x-rays to see what's going on inside of your body. You know, I didn't know. I'll tell you about my experience. When I went to the Dr. Gill Center, I sat down with Dr. Wendy. She was so helpful. And I told her about what I thought was soft tissue issues in my upper neck. Well, she identified that as a spinal compression, and through decompression technology at the Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief, um, friends, I got relief, and I can't tell you how satisfying it was to know what was causing the issue and to know that after a few short sessions of spinal decompression at the Dr. Gill Center that I was taken care of in my upper neck areas. My lower back's going to be more of a long-term issue, but I'll tell you this, I don't have to pop pills for it anymore. I used to. So if you're feeling back pain, neck pain, knee pain, hip pain, elbow pain, they can all be treated with no needles and no downtime. Get with the Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain, pain Relief. 615-882-4838. 615-882-4838. It's the Dr. Gill Center. Stop by today.
Uh, much to get to. Super Talk 99.7 WTN Busy News Day. There's an ongoing press conference happening right now in Baltimore, Maryland, regarding the, um, the bridge collapse, the result of a cargo ship hitting the bridge overnight about 1.30 in the morning. A lot of questions and many answers forthcoming by Jennifer Hamady, who is the chairwoman of the NTSB. Anything coming out of that? We will get to in the news department as well as on Super Talk 99.7 WTN in our side of things. Right now, it is Katie's turn. Katie, thank you for your patience. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. It's, it could be a very dumb one, but my question is, on, I believe it was Biden's first day in office. I saw him say, okay, everybody, y'all can come on in now. Come on up. Did that make them still illegal? I, I lost you for a second there, Kat, uh, Katie. You, yeah, uh, on, on Biden's first day in office, or second, Max, he made a statement telling everybody that he, you know, that the, the, their party was in. Now everybody, come on up. Uh huh. You know, like all the people who want to come in, right. y'all come on in. So does that would that change? Number one, do the people coming in think they're not illegals anymore since he invited them up? And number two, are they still illegals? No, no, ma'am. Joe Biden cannot unilaterally change immigration policy by word or executive action. That has to go through an act of Congress. So all the individuals that are acting exterior to the legal immigration process remain illegal aliens in the United States of America, no matter if Joe Biden calls them illegal aliens or newcomers or whatever the hell they want to call them. So I, I hope that answers your question. These are still illegal aliens. Here comes news. And right after the news, AFP's Tori Venable comes on the radio show with us. Stand by. Two o'clock, I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. Right now, 64 degrees and mostly cloudy on Music Row. we got a weather forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. More details coming to light following that container ship collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge that suspends over a waterway in Maryland. The cargo vessel issued a mayday call saying they've lost control. Authorities say it was moving at a very rapid speed in the Pat Pasco River when it struck the bridge. Ike Jaji is in Baltimore, where search efforts are underway this afternoon. We're being told that there was a crew of eight workers who were busy filling potholes at the time of the incident. Now, when that May Day came from that container ship, we're being told officials on the bridge essentially stopped traffic. And right now, we're learning that the Maryland transportation officials, they reviewed the traffic cameras, and they're now confirming that no vehicles were transiting the bridge at the time of the incident. Right now in Tennessee, Mount Juliet police investigating after a man was found dead on a creek bank today. The body was found at the bottom of a steep embankment along the creek near Lebanon Road. The individual has been identified. However, authorities have not released his name at this time. And famine in Gaza is imminent. According to U.N. officials, they're urging Israeli forces to allow more aid trucks in. Rick Lynette in Israel has more on recent reports of clashes in Gaza as Israel continues its war with Hamas. In Gaza, witnesses say Israeli warplanes bombed the southern city of Rafa, where around 1.3 million people have taken refuge. Uh, many of them fled northern parts, uh, fearing bombardment there by the IDF. Now, Palestinian media reports that at least 18 people were killed uh, in an airstrike on a residential building and elsewhere. Uh, fierce gun battles continue to rage around hospitals nearby Han Yunus and Gaza City. And this, as Israel says, Hamas has rejected the latest ceasefire deal. Hamas says that Israel isn't responding to their ma main demands, which includes a total withdrawal of IDF troops in Gaza. That's the latest news. Weather forecast next. I'm Mac Mori, WTN News.
All right, here we go. Super Talk 99.7, WTN, Matt Murphy and you. And we have a guest. We're excited about our final hour today. It's been a miserable, I mean, outside from a weather perspective, it's just been, it was crazy windy last night and throughout the night, and it's getting better from a weather perspective, but it's just been kind of overcast and miserable. But one way or the other, sunshine will come uh, at some point or another. Uh, it's 2.05, almost 2.06. Good afternoon. Glad you're with us. We'll hand off to Brian Wilson in the drive coming up in about 55 minutes or so. Plenty to get to uh, prior to that. Let's turn our attention to some state issues. You know, when I first got to Nashville, you know, there's always several of these investigative reporters that are known to be, you know, kind of gumshoe, get to the bottom of the truth of what's going on in local or state politics and expose it to the people around. And Phil Williams was one of these guys. I don't know Phil Williams. Uh, he works for News Channel 5. Um, I know that he has exposed several Republicans since I've been in town, um, you know, I could go through some of the cases. I don't want to bore you with them. I have begged of him and have impressed upon him my desire to see him investigate Representative Justin Jones as an example. Uh, there are credible reports that Justin Jones covered up a sexual assault, uh, two separate sexual assault allegations outside of the Tennessee State Capitol in 2020 when Justin Jones was acting as an activist. Uh, and the accuser said that Justin Jones intentionally refused to report the sexual assaults to police because he did not want to get off message and make the story about the assaults as opposed to their point of view. In other words, he chose his activism over a sexual assault of two separate females, according to his accuser. Phil Williams has not responded to my request for him to investigate that. But he's an investigative reporter for News Channel 5. Now... He had a big expose that he was promoting all throughout the weekend that dropped last night at 6 o'clock. Uh, let me share with you, before we introduce to you our guest, uh, the, the premise of the expose that they say just pulls back the curtain on the shenanigans and goings-on of the General Assembly. Thanks for joining us here at 6, I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Carrie Sharp. In the recording, you will hear, that obtained by Chief Investigator Reporter Phil Williams, you will hear how one group with un virtually unlimited money to spend threatens a reluctant lawmaker that his job could be at stake if he doesn't vote for school vouchers. Okay. Phil is with us now. Phil, yet another example. Uh, reve you're revealing what's really happening behind the closed doors at Capitol Hill, right? That's right. A couple of weeks ago, when school vouchers came up for a vote in a House committee, we had heard rumblings about threats coming from those big money groups pushing the legislation. Tonight, you're going to hear the evidence for yourself. Okay, welcome everyone. All right, so there's, uh, and they go into the story. And the background of the story is basically this, uh, that there are lobbyist organizations that believe that there are measures in front of the General Assembly that could benefit the parents of children who have children in public schools in the state of Tennessee. One of those lobbying groups is AFP Tennessee, Americans for Prosperity Tennessee. The head of that group in the state of Tennessee is Tori Venable. And Tori Venable is being accused by Phil Williams of something. I'm not really sure of what she's being accused of doing, except lobbying for her organization and lobbying for what she believes is the best path forward for parents in the state of Tennessee. To speak to this matter and to speak to the piece that happened last night, we welcome Tori Venable to the Matt Murphy Show on Super Talk 99.7. Matt, thanks so much for having me. Hey, Tori. Glad to be here. Oh, you evil thing, you. My How dare you? strong-willed woman with red hair. Uh, I, I asked Tori when she came in <laughs> if she brought uh, a, a lot of money because apparently you have billionaires backing you. And uh, according to Phil Williams, that's a, a bad thing to have money behind a cause that you support. Well, I mean, good ideas get funded, right? And so we have we are blessed to have donors across the United States that you want to see us in Bidenomics by, by and increase the March for Freedom across from D.C. to Tennessee and anywhere in between. So I've been with Americans for Prosperity since 2013 when Andy Ogles was our original state director. And I think there might be a little bit of a personal issue there where Phil has, has does not like our current congressman in the 5th Congressional District. So maybe maybe that's a piece of why the targeting is happening. But, you know, we... I am more than a lobbyist. I'm the state director for Americans for Prosperity, and we fight for lower taxes, less government, more freedom, better education. And we've been doing this for the past decade here in Tennessee. This isn't some fly-by-night group or out-of-state, whatever you want to call it. And to make it about donors or money instead of about helping the kids and failing schools in Tennessee, that's what's really wrong. Well, 
he he seemed to want to focus in the piece, and the piece is eight minutes long, and I'm not going to bore the audience with it. And if any anyone wants to find it, you can find it. I've, I've it's all over social media, but he seems to focus on the idea that there was a threat made by your organization, by you specifically, to a lawmaker, and that it was all on recording. Um, how did how did this conversation with Representative Todd Warner go down? Well, Talk he, to me about it. Uh, well, he called me up on a Saturday on March 16th, and I was pretty suspect when I was on the call with him because he was saying a lot of really out-of-pocket shady things. So I kind of suspected something was up with the purpose of his call. And, you know, to say I can't protect you if you're on the wrong side of this, that's not a threat. That is a statement of fact. Because I can't. If you're on the wrong side of this issue, we know where parents stand. We know how Tennesseans feel about this issue and they want school choice. And all we are doing is connecting with constituents back in the district, letting them know how their lawmakers are voting. So I just want to get all the background straight in my head. So you've been advancing the cause of school choice in the state of Tennessee since decade. it came up for, for, a, for a long time. Yeah, for as long as I've been involved. I've been, and I care about this deeply. I'm a mom. I went to a failing Nashville public school. I know how much education can change a kid's life. And that is why we are fighting for it. If I won the Mega Millions Powerball tomorrow or tonight, I would still be giving my time, my treasure, and my talent to make sure that every student in Tennessee has access to a stellar education. So the... Um AFP Tennessee, their involvement in this specific legislation, I mean, it predates this specific legislation, oh, yeah. their involvement in, yeah. in school so choice. So the special needs education savings account, the sa- education savings account that just went into effect last year, um, that is Davidson, Shelby, and Hamilton counties, those were where we had the most failing schools. We want to see every child across the state of Tennessee have access. So when you go down as a representative of AFP and you talk to lawmakers, I mean, you, you feel like you're representing, obviously the organization that you serve, but more importantly, the parents that would be impacted by the legislation. The most underrepresented uh, underrepresented constituency up there, right? We represent taxpayers and parents. We represent people that are just regular Tennesseans that want what's best for their own children. And who better to make that decision than the parent instead of the government? And, and I would note that, I mean, there are other organizations that are dedicated to this purpose, right? And Phil makes mention of a couple of them so afp is not the only organization lobbying on behalf of parents that's correct well not on the school choice front right but we work on a lot of different issues so we are also working on the constitutional amendment to forever ban a statewide property tax that should pass the senate later on this week so there's a lot of different things especially on the fiscal policy side that we work for lower taxes less government more freedom that is our 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 bread and butter so it it feels like this piece, and I, I would describe it as a hit piece against AFP, and and more specifically, they try to use you as an. I, I don't know what they're accusing you of doing. Uh, do you? Uh, I, I don't understand either. I mean, frankly, you know, this is politics. This is exactly how these things go down. There was never any threat. Like I said, it was a statement of fact. And how would you think that? I would rep, uh, that I'm going to protect you or come save you if you don't if you're not aligned with us. Like, so, why would I do that? So in the, I, I just want to get the timeline right here uh, because you say that this conversation happened on a Saturday, March 16th, just yeah. eight days ago or so, or I guess ten days ago now. That's correct. The there's a a part of the piece where Phil Williams is standing in a hallway with you, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming that this is sometime around the time that the bill was before the ed committee yeah i think it was the 12th so phil williams interviewed you in the hallway asking you if you'd ever threatened lawmakers or whatever before you had this telephone call yes which i told him then was absolutely ridiculous okay that's interesting because he he's going down a line of questioning about you and how you do your lobbying Mm -hmm. and then four days later the representative that eventually turned over the recording to him it calls you. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Do you feel like Phil Williams and Todd Warner set you up? I mean, they tried, I suppose, but I mean, I didn't say anything that's not the truth. I didn't say anything that, look, I'm a, I am an authentic truth teller and that is a rarity in politics. So, you know, they're not always going to like when I tell them the truth, but I'm not going to lie to them and I'm not going to be unethical with them despite the traps that were laid out before me. So let, let's talk about Representative Warner and the and the 
phone call that you had? How long did it go on? It was a 17 minute and three second phone call. And I mean, why did he tell you that he called you? He wanted to know if we were knocking doors in his district. It was how he initially started out. And I let him know that I didn't think anybody was knocking doors down there that day. Uh huh. And then where did it go from there? Oh, well, I mean, he, he hit on a bunch of different things. I mean, that's where that's really kind of what raised my, my flag to think. That is it odd is, that a representative would call you on a Saturday? On a Saturday and also like wanting to know everything that AFP is doing and, and saying, oh, I hope you don't get somebody to challenge me. Like that's not what we hadn't had any conversations about that. And I told him before, I think it was even included in the report. I was like, look, I like you. You'd be the last person on my list. We agree on all these other things. Um, so explain to people that don't understand what a lobbyist like yourself does. So and 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 we, you know, sometimes we use the word as a bad word, mm -hmm. uh, but really, I mean, I, I have my concept of what the purpose of a lot. Explain to people what you do on. So on Capitol Hill, what I do is a little bit different than most of the contract lobbyists up there or the taxpayer funded lobbyists up there, because I am what I would refer to as a conviction lobbyist. I don't lobby on anything that is not a sincerely held personal conviction. And so that is a small fraction of my job. Most of what we do is we elevate people's voices in Tennessee. So we have brought over 200 people to the Capitol with us to meet face to face with their representatives and their senators and tell them that they support school choice and why. So they can understand how the policy is impacting the people that they represent. That is something that's different than we do versus so many of these other groups out there, because our focus is the grassroots and elevating the individual's voice to the legislature. So you get called by Warner on a Saturday after you've been talking about this issue. Has he already told you at the time that he calls you that he's going to be a no? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, you knew. yeah, I already knew he was a no. Yeah. And and how do you respond to that as head of the AFP? I mean, do you do you, I mean, because you obviously let him know and I don't know what led up to the conversation. You do. Mm hmm. Where he said, well, you're coming out. Well, if, well, I mean, if, if the chips fall where they may in terms of your organization and who you support or who you don't support in regard to his particular district, right? Well, yeah. I mean, we, or any district. We, we issue a scorecard at the close of every legislative session when people are paying attention. It's tnscorecard.com. And you can see all the b bills that we key voted. This is our top priority this year. This is the biggest, most transformational change that we can make in our state so that every child has access to a quality education. And the parents should control that, not the government. So that is our focus. That has been why we have brought people up to the Capitol. That has been the primary effort of our lobbying this year. And, um, you know, he's he said he's a no. He's and that's fine. I don't expect him to be a yes. I, I was done arguing with him about it because other than arguing the actual merits or details of the bill, which like granted, there was a there's a lot of details that had to be worked out. But once it became clear that it doesn't matter what the what the bill is, that he won't support it. There's no reason for me to waste my time or his. All right, so you have this conversation. How did the how, how do you feel like the flow of the conversation went, and how did it end? Just give me kind of the 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 basic wrap up of the conversation. Well, the basic wrap up of the conversation was I even whispered to my husband who was sitting right there. I said, I think he's recording this because he was saying some crazy things about giving away money to Ford and how it was for jobs, and and uh, he tried to call the ESA legislation corporate welfare, which it absolutely is not. And, uh, you know, he, he, he said a bunch of things that just we haven't that he hasn't said in any of the other conversations and brought up other individuals, tried to kind of trash talk a bunch of people. And I just wasn't going for it because I'm, I'm focused on policy. He specifically asked, like uh, he he thought somehow because I guess it was included in Phil Williams piece. Some other groups had sent out some text messages or sent out some um, some digital ads that we did not do. So, Ours was straight up grassroots lobbying. Call your lawmaker, which did not just go to Warner, by the way. It went to like 18 different districts. Call your lawmaker. Let him know that you support school choice. That's what it was. Right. So you uh, basic advocacy. And and I don't the Phil Williams piece. I mean, they're treating it like ooh secret recording. Well, it's a telephone conversation. Right. So. Tennessee is a one-party state. Mm -hmm. You were unaware that you were being recorded. That's correct. So either Todd Warner was aware that the recording was happening or it was an illegal recording. Well, I mean, that. I mean, yeah. Because there, there's two parties in the conversation. 
You were not aware that you didn't. Did you give a recording to Phil Williams? No, I did not. Okay. I, I, I suspected it when it was happening that there was something shady going on, but I absolutely did not. No, know. I'm just yeah. I'm just figuring out what the what the nature of the call was and whether or not the call had a purpose beyond just talking to a lobbyist like yourself, talking to AFP, explaining differences. That makes sense, right? If I'm a representative, look, I know I'm with you guys on most stuff. I just want you to know where I'm at on it. You felt like it was more than that? Oh, absolutely. I, I felt like he was like rattling off union talking points at me. So I, I, I just really wasn't, I, I laugh a bunch of times. Um, I told him he was being ridiculous a couple of times. I mean, I just, I wasn't going to argue with him. That was not how I intended to spend my Saturday. And it's, it was, what's the point? I already knew he was a no. So, I mean, whether, I, I don't understand why, because we were friendly before this, right? And I think he's attacking AFP or like wanted to put AFP in the bullseye here because I'm the only one who will answer his calls. Because any of the other organizations that are fighting for school choice, if he tries to call them up, I can guarantee you they're not answering. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more doors closed to him in the future because he's not a reliable person. Well, and and by the way, in the interest of, the, uh, well, just letting everyone know and disclosure, Todd Warner, I talked to Todd earlier today. Todd's coming on the show tomorrow. So he's going to have ample opportunity to give his side of this story after Tori gives her side of the story. Uh, and he's agreed to do that, and that's wonderful. And you know what? If Phil Williams wants to come on and talk about his part of the story, he's welcome to do that as well. Uh, the point is this. Um, y- you feel like you had established where he was on the legislation, mm-hmm. and you expressed your discomfort. You, you, Phil Williams is suggesting that there's this billionaire outside organization that is impacting the people of state of Tennessee. And how do you respond to that accusation? Well, well, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous to think that, you know, this is about donors or money or anything else. You have entrenched interests that want to maintain the status quo. And what we are fighting for is the future of Tennessee's children. Do you uh, stand by? Do you want me to go to break now or do you want me to go ahead and go to this? I mean, I, I'm I just need some counsel from you, Bell. Go to go to this. Go, go ahead and go to this. All right. So uh, apparently we had set up a conversation with Representative Todd Warner, and apparently Todd Warner wants to talk to us now. So Tori Venable's here, and Todd Warner's here, and Matt Murphy's here. Representative Warner, are you there, sir? Yes, I am. I am here. Okay, so... Um, phone, well, I don't know what's going on there for full disclosure, but I stepped out of committee. My phone is blowing up. And uh, I understand somebody's not telling the truth is sitting there in your in your. Oh, you think so? Okay, are you so, recording this conversation as well? Well, we are. I didn't record the first one. <laughs> so you so okay? So you did not. So was it a telephone conversation, Representative? Yeah, it was a telephone conversation. And you did not record it. No. Were you were you were you aware of the recording? No, I was not. So you're saying, what, Tori, were you aware of the recording? Absolutely not. So someone's breaking the law, Representative. I, I mean, I don't know if anybody broke the law or not, you know. Uh, you don't know the laws uh, about recording? I, you don't know the laws about recording no, in the no, state of Tennessee? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't record, I don't record uh, <laughs> conversations. I don't, you know, you know. Uh, you know so it is, your, it is your statement, so it's your statement today that you did not record this conversation? No, I did not record a conversation. And you do not, you had no awareness that the recording was happening at the time that the hey, telephone conversation. The, 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 the recording happened on, on December the 8th. When Corey, when I talked to her about the, when the bill first was being talked about, when, when, uh, False. Uh, when it, when it first, first came out, uh, uh, I called her because I knew that they were, you know, had been, I'd been told that they were working with the governor. I called to find out about information about the bill. I told Corey, uh, Tory, at that time that I would I couldn't support the bill. I ran on that. Uh, there's no private school in my district. Uh, this is growth in government. And this is corporate welfare. This is an entitlement program. It's everything that that uh, uh, that T, uh, that the Tories group stands, you know, stands and usually fights against. Right. But right. You know, right. 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 Well, I, I'm just trying to get. I'm just Tory. trying to get a timeline. Hold you on, sure Todd. About I'm just, that December eighth. I'm just trying to get a timeline. So you're saying the recording happened on December eighth? Uh, it's somewhere about that time. I'm not. How sure. do you know if you're not aware that the recording happened? How do you know when it happened? Because because I've got bits and pieces from from when somebody sent it to Phil when they put the attack the, the hit ads out on me. Somebody was sick of that mess, and they, and, and they, you know, I guess they said Phil. I don't know. So Phil Williams told but, you that this happened on December eighth. Uh, 
they're somewhere somewhere about. Okay, so now, so no, no, wait a minute. You just said December eighth. Now you're walking back on that. Tell me, tell me what you know. Somewhere in that vicinity is when when it when it when when I was still with. So you're you're saying that you you had a telephone call with Tori Venable, and that that telephone call was recorded unbeknownst to you. Is that you're on the record for that? I, I'm I'm on the record saying I was threatened by Tory Venable and by if <laughs> no sir my question to you were you aware of a recording happening at the time that you had the conversation presented by Phil Williams there, there on News Channel Five? Lot going on. We, there was a lot going on. You're crawdadding, Representative. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. I'm not trying to challenge you. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm trying to get to the facts. I'm asking you to tell the truth. Were you aware? Oh, were truth, sir. you? Sir, were you aware that you were being recorded? I'm not 100% sure what was going on. There was so much, you know, I was surprised by the threatening that I was receiving. So you cannot tell me whether or not you were aware that you were being recorded at the time that you had the conversation with Tori Venable? Yeah, I I, I wasn't 100% sure. There were several people in the room, and she was on speakerphone, and... Who, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Who was in the room? Tell me who was in the room, I please. I can't remember. You can't I, remember. I, I, was I, Phil Williams I in the room? Remember. No, absolutely. One hundred. Did you did you get not. did you give the recording to Phil Williams? One hundred percent did not. Did, did are you show, are, are you aware of who gave the recording to Phil Williams? One hundred percent, absolutely not. You are one hundred percent, absolutely not sure, or you are sure that you don't know. I'm, I'm not sure who gave it to him. Which who, who sent it to him? And so, and so, I'm asking you, sir, that we we need to open up an investigation as to who recorded you, Todd Warner, and Tori Venable, because it is illegal for a third party to record a telephone conversation between two other people in the state of Tennessee. Are you aware of that, sir? I, I, no, I don't know all the laws here in the state. No, I do not. You're a you you represent what district, Mr. Warner? Ninety uh, second district, sir. And you're not aware of all that. I don't know every single law. I don't think there's ever, yeah. that no representative here knows every single law. Come on, Matt. I'm, I'm asking you once again to tell me whether or not you remember who was – you remember that there were people in the room there, during the there, time of the there, conversation. There were several people in the room. I don't remember. I'm not calling – where, 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 I mean, where were you when the conversation happened, sir? At, at my house. And there were several people at your house, sir? Yes. And while you were having this conversation with Tori? Yes. And this happened on or around December 8th. Is that your testimony? Uh, yes. Yes. Sometime, sometime in that. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't remember the exact date. I can try to look back and, and, and figure it out. But, but I, you, I well, you originally, you originally seemed very sure that it was December 8th and now you're not sure. Is that right? It's somewhere. In, it's somewhere in December. She made it sound earlier, and I'm having to go off tech that that that, that someone had sent me that, that that me and Phil collaborated this up. That is absolutely not the truth. Why don't you get the truth out of her about what she did? Well, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna whip up on her when I'm done whipping up on you, Representative. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'd love to come down and sit down with, right beside you. Well, I would love. I would. You're it. you're welcome to. We'll you can come down and, anytime. But you know, anytime. I, you know. It, uh, you know, it, it, what's what's sad about this is I vote with AFP ninety nine point nine percent of the time, and, and 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 to get done like this, I'm one of the most conservative members up here. Are you and, not and, uh, integrity I, I, is one I, of our guiding I, I, principles? I, I understand. I understand all of that, uh, Representative Warner. It, what concerns me is that a sitting representative. You said the ninety second district. Yes. A, a sitting representative of the ninety second district was illegally recorded in or around or on or around December 8th with people present and you're not really sure who was present you were illegally recorded representative and are yeah. you are you concerned at all I've about been, that hey, let me tell you I've, since I've been down here I've been recorded a lot a lot do you uh, ever record sorry. conversations <laughs> representative do you have you ever recorded no, no. conversations no 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 ask uh, ask Tori about her uh, her uh, about Michael's recording no no I, I, I'll ask I, I'll ask no, Tori no, ask I know I'm asking you so you're you've never recorded conversations as a as no, a representative no 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 not unless I'm like, uh, unless I'm you know I lay it up for like if I'm 
discussing a, a bid with somebody in, in, in my job or something. But I don't record conversations down here, and I don't have no need to. Uh huh. But I guarantee you mine's been recorded by the federal government and everybody else down here. Uh huh. You know, my home's been raided since I've been down here. Your it's, home, uh, your, really your home's been raided. Been done. Yeah. Well, I'm sad to you hear. You know that. all about it, Matt. You I'm, know all about it. I'm sad to hear that, Todd. I mean, no, I do. I do. Listen, and I've never been. I've never been charged with a crime. Um, I've been charged with a crime. Have you ever well, had you anyone know, assist you in recording conversations? No, absolutely not. Okay. I so do, you know, I don't need that. I don't and need, and, I don't and, do and, that. and and it do, and I'm just. I'm going to take you at your word when I ask the question, and, and I, I have no reason not to, Todd. It doesn't concern you at all that a third party recorded your conversation between yourself and Tori? I've got, Matt, I've got nothing to hide. I've got not, not a damn thing to hide. And, uh, it, it, you know, I, I mean, I don't know where you're trying to go with this, but, you know, I assume every conversation that I have up here at Cordell Hole is being recorded. And if you don't assume that, then wait a minute. You you, you, have, you just told me you were at your house. I, I am. I said I assume every conversation I have up here every day is being. Recorded. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the conversation that happened on and around December eighth with folks around, none of whom you can remember at your house with Tory Venable. Yeah, I, 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 we've done discussed all that, Matt. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. I, you know, I, I wanted to wait and come in and well, you're well. Uh, look, you're I, welcome to come in. I, I I just have a hard time believing that you can't remember anybody that was around you that day. I, I, I that I mean, I I'm not saying time, you're not. Uh, I have a hard time sitting back and, and people and and, and, and listening to lies. That I what what, what threat? You you said on the Phil Williams piece that you felt threatened by Tory. What what? threatened you i I don't feel i mean not not like a physical threat i feel like that they're gonna you know no you said i I saw you like i mean i saw it last night you said that was a threat that was a threat phil that's what you said you pointed and said that was a a political threat it it was a political threat more like a statement of fact not a threat yeah all right so i don't don't think it is a uh, go ahead will her will her will her group headhunt uh members down here absolutely they will she knows it will you know, will your group headhunt individuals down there, Tory? Representative Warner says that you will uh, headhunt. I don't, I don't know what he means by that, but will you? AFP supports <laughs> policy champions that work on the issues that are aligned with us. And you know, if- did you? And, and, I, and now, now, Todd, I've been mean to you. Hold on, I'm gonna be mean to Tory. Okay. Did you record that? Absolutely not. And and oh, I have more to say. Did do you remember? Is it to your recollection that this happened on December eighth? I remember having this exact conversation that was aired with. Todd Warner on the 16th of March. And I thought it was very suspect when he called me on the Saturday and we talked for 17 minutes and three seconds. So do why you don't have you that just on release your phone? the whole Do you thing? have that? Com- uh, sure do. I oh, had a wow. screenshot of where he called me All on right. this day. So did you, do you recall the conversation, Representative Warner, that you had with Tory Venable on, Mar- on March 16th? I told you earlier I called about trying to find out what was in the governor's bill when it first start, started coming out. No, no, this I'm talking about March 16th. This was a, a no, little No, I don't over, remember March 16th. I'm, I'm looking at her telephone right now, sir. It was a yeah, seventeen a seventeen minute telephone call on March sixteenth at two oh eight p.m. Is, that ain't when that that ain't when that ain't when that nothing that ain't you know it, that's when it was. it says Todd Warner no, on it, it sir. I'm, I'm, not. Get Phil, get Phil on the show, dude. Get I'm I, 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 I'm looking at the phone, Todd. It says Todd Warner, seventeen minutes and thirteen seconds, March sixteenth. Are you denying that you had a telephone conversation with Tory Benavol on March sixteenth? I, I I can't remember. I don't know. Why do you have your do you have your cell phone near you? Yeah, I'm on it. Well, why? Well, why don't you look at your cell phone and tell me? Well, because I'll have to get back and try to try to find it. Okay, but I can assure you that the, that that's when it did, it did not take place. In I promise you. It okay, so it, it, it is your statement today on these airwaves on Super Talk that you did not have a conversation with Tori on March 16th. I'm, I made. I know. I'm not saying that. So I'm now, saying, so I did you not did. record no conversation with with Tory Venable. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm asking you if you had a conversation. I'm asking you if you had a conversation on March 16th. I don't 16th. remember, Matt. You don't Matt, remember. I do not remember. Can I you look? Can day. you? Could you put us on speaker and look at your phone and see if your phone shows you? It was just. It was just over a week ago. You could scroll back. You just scroll back to recents. Uh, like if you've got an iPhone over there, you just go to recents and you just scroll back to March 16th, and it probably say Tory Venable there or something like that. Could you do that for me, Representative?
I've had more than I've had several t- conversations with her. No, I cannot find it at this present time. Okay. But, okay. but you know, I've called her. I've called her numerous times. Like I say, I vote. We, you know, we believe we believe a lot alike. This is one issue. That All right, talk, I want I want I, I want you to feel like, I want issues. you to feel like you're being treated fairly. So what what do you want me to uh, press upon Tori Venable right now? What 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 do you feel like she's I, done I mean, wrong? I, you know, just you know, I I mean, uh, you know, just. Uh, it, uh, just whatever you want to press. I mean, no, you tell me. Uh, you tell me what you think she's done wrong and what she's done against the spirit of your she, representation. She, she, I, I, I felt threatened uh, by a political threat, not a physical threat. And I've heard her boast in the past about the work that they've done to take out Bob uh, Bob Ramsey, which I absolutely did not agree with a lot of his politics. Uh, I've heard her boast about that. I've heard them boast about having other reps on 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 uh, on uh, on tape uh, themselves. They probably got me on tape, uh, uh, and uh, I've heard members of AFP. We can. I don't want to call no names, but if I need to call names, I'll call names. Call names. But, Let's call names. Uh, Let's go. Call names, man. This is your point. This is your time. This is your moment. Call names. I'm not a guy to try to stir up a bunch of trouble. Really, really. really. <laughs> Yeah, you can't, right, you, right, you, right, representative. Right, you can't. My, my, you listen, Todd. You can't. Tell you, listen tell to how this. I, I want you to know how this is going for you right now. Okay, let me let me explain to you how this is going. You're for killing you. me, Matt. I know what you're doing. I but have you, no, out no, I'm not killing you. You're killing you. You can't tell me yeah. whether or not you had a telephone conversation a Saturday before last with Tori Venable. Yeah, uh, n- no, I cannot. You can't. No, you can't I, remember it. But you remembered at the beginning no, of this conversation. You, you but, but, but you, you told me, at the, uh, dude, know. at the beginning of this conversation, you remembered that you had one on December 8th. You said I December said it 8th. it was around December 8th. No, man, you on. didn't. I have this recorded. Todd, we can go back and listen. You said December 8th. I said December 8th. Are you sure? You said yes, I'm sure. Yeah. I, but I don't. But, but there were members from her, her group that come into my office three weeks ago, two to three weeks ago. I'm not exact on date. And they plainly said that they had members recorded and one of them that they would ruin one of them's career. What, if, what? They, if they let the, if they let the tape out. Who was that? I know, I know absolutely nothing about this. I have no idea what he's talking who, about. Who came into your office, Representative? Michael, Lo- M- Michael Lofty. Michael Lofty. And whose career did he say he was going to ruin? I'm not going to do that right now. Why not? Um Huh? Because I'm just not going. I mean, to do hell, that. you're ruining your own career today. Why not ruin his? Hey, no, I, 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 I let my reputation stand on its own. People back in the '92nd district, uh, you know, I was attacked pretty you hard can't, last time. You can't tell me whether or not you had a phone conversation with a woman sitting right here who says that you did and gave me evidence that you had a conversation, handed me the evidence in front of me, Todd, and I've you had can't. Several conversations with Tori. She knows how. how I mean, she knows how. how, how you know, uh, mm-hmm. how I've supported her legislation in, in the past. Well, I mean, I, I think that's great. I think that's great. I, I don't have anything against you. I have against people that don't tell the truth. But, that lack integrity. I have I have a little something lack against people that... that and, I don't, and, and Representative Warner, I don't believe you're being fully truthful today. Well, sir, I stepped right out of committee to, to, to make this call. You I understand. You already me a time or two, and I was trying to find a time. I understand. And I have two or three people, my constituents, says you need to get I on. I am an open, I, well, and I, and I, I hope right that they feel well, sir. I try to do so, and mm-hmm. I walk myself into, to, you know. You, well, I mean, I don't, to, you know. I was trying. Like I made this up with Phil. I didn't make it up with Phil. I, Phil got no, 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 no. When, when did I say you made it up with Phil? Where when did I say that? I never said that. Tori said it. You were indicated that the that, Tory. That, 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 well, I mean, Tory's up. Uh, Tory is entitled to her own opinion. You're talking about me. You're yeah. talking to me. Yeah, once you get Phil on the show, let him talk to you. Phil is invited anytime, and you, Representative Warner, are invited anytime you want to come on, including tomorrow if you want to finish this. But I've got to go right now. All right. Thank you. I'll see if I can get an appointment there tomorrow. Hey, by all means, come on anytime you want, Representative. I uh, I welcome the conversation. There's Representative Todd Warner. Well, that was interesting. All right, we've got to make up some time here. Uh, Tori, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let Todd see if he wants to come back on tomorrow. And I will invite you at a time down the road so that we can talk more about school choice and perhaps you can offer your testimony as to what he has to say tomorrow. Because I, 
I don't want anybody to feel like I'm bulldogging him or I'm setting him up. He called us. Well, I, I want to add one thing just for the point of clarity here. That December 8th date that he just happened to throw out. My daughter had a baby at the beginning of December, and I was in the hospital with her that entire week. And I was not taking political phone calls in December. Well, there you go. Tori, thank you. We'll do this more in just a moment. And, and for the record, I saw her telephone that indicated that she had a conversation with Todd Warner on the 16th of March for about 17 minutes. So, you know, I don't know what Todd's thinking. 240, Super Talk 99.7 WT.
Hey friends, it's Matt Murphy. Craft body scan is simply uh, an imperative in our lives in the modern era. And this is why I say so, uh, because it's so important to learn of issues that might be going on inside of your body before you have symptoms. And, you know, previous to CT scans and this level of technology that they have at Craft Body Scan, which is just amazing, um, you had to wait until the symptoms presented themselves. And oftentimes, I'm sad to say, it's too late. Craft Body Scan wants to give you a heart and lung scan for $149 right now. You and a couple, you and your significant other or your brother, your sister, whomever you love that you want to see get this CT scan, it's a $1,300 plus value for each of you. And right now, it's available for $149 at Craft Body Scan. You get a private health consultation in the meantime. You're scanned on site. Uh, it, it, the technology is amazing. It only takes about five to eight minutes. You don't have to take your clothes off or anything like that. It's non invasive. Images are then reviewed by their board certified radiologist, and results are presented to you. The findings are presented to you. 615 436 1000. 615 436 1000 or Craft Body Scan. Spell it with a C. CraftBodyScan.com. Hey, friends, Matt Murphy for Defend Systems. Brink Fiddler and Defend Systems is simply the best in Middle Tennessee, really in the Southeast, and I would say in the United States of America, in helping you understand the threats that your facility faces, whether you're a business owner, a churchgoer, uh, someone in a school setting. If you are a part of where people gather, there is a danger in our world today, and sadly, uh, it is right here in Tennessee. To make up for this danger, let's get Defense Systems in your life. Brink and his team can come and they can assess uh, your facility. They can talk to your crew. They're going to help with workplace violence prevention, life safety consultation, medical training, all customized to your facility and all designed to assist you in the unfortunate and unlikely event uh, that something happens in your place of business. I invite you to call Brink today. It's what they do. They help you put a plan in place where hope is not a plan, Defense Systems is there. DefenseSystems.com, 615-236-6484. That's 615-236-6484. Go to DefenseSystems.com. That's DefenseSystems.com. All right, a little off schedule right now because of our – we had to shuffle a few things around. We had Tori Venable on the show with us. She's with 
AFP Tennessee. Uh, there was an accusation of secret recordings and bullying and threatening made by Phil Williams of News Channel 5. Um, I saw it as basic lobbying. I mean, that's what lobbyists to do, and they help lawmakers understand the consequences of their actions. If you're going against this bill, I'm going to tell the folks about it. Anyway, Todd Warner, uh, a subject of the piece last night by Phil Williams and a subject of the conversation between Tori Venable and I, called in unexpectedly, and we had to take that call, and that got us a little off schedule. Now, let me give you a little bit of an update. So Phil Williams has responded, and I have invited him on the show to give his side of this. Tori has been steadfast and confident with me that the conversation that is in question between herself and Todd Warner happened on March 16th. Tori Venable also recalls, and she's going to get me the date certain on this, that she had a conversation between Phil Williams and herself in the hallways. I guess this was at Cordell Hall or at the state capitol somewhere, one way or the other. Uh, we're going to figure that out. But here's what Phil Williams says. Matt Murphy's show was absolutely excoriating Todd Warner based on Tori Venable's claim that she was recorded after I interviewed her, claiming that he set her up. Warner is the one telling the truth, not Tori Venable. I heard the conversation before the interview. I guess he means before the interview with Tori Venable. Well, I invite uh, Phil to come on the show. I invite Phil to tell us uh, if Todd Warner is also telling the truth when Todd Warner says that he did not record Tori Venable, that it was not his phone uh, that it was recorded on, and that he was not responsible for getting that recording to Phil Williams or no one in his inner circle. So uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, one way or the other, my apologies to Brian Wilson. Normally, Brian and I get a conversation point to talk about what's happening on the drive, and my apologies to him because uh, we're so off schedule, we've got to do this right now. We will follow up on this tomorrow. What an incredible last hour of the show. It has been, um, it has been something to listen to. I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. And we'll follow up on it tomorrow at Supertalk 99.7 WTN.